All right, so I was asked uh, last week, a uh, uh, Facebook uh, friend, Caitlin McKenzie, contacted me and, and she was asking me how I came to be a positive, positive trainer. So basically, what was my journey into positive dog training? 20 years ago, I had two dogs. I had a Neapolitan Mastiff called Kitty and a dog de Bordeaux called Bosco. Um, Kitty was an extremely um, sensitive dog and Bosco was very, very, very motivated with uh, by play okay but i didn't know then what i know now and i used a lot of corrections uh, with both of them uh, i mean a, a, a lot of corrections um, and when i reflect on things that i would have changed uh, in my life that's one of the single biggest things that i wish i'd have done differently with those two um two beings okay two beings in my life um they were mine they were my family and that's how I treated them and I treated them like that because um, for a variety of reasons okay so when I think very often as positive dog trainers that we want to be generous with people and I fully understand that uh, but I'm going to go a little bit I've talked about this before in some of my, my video content about uh, the kind of mindset behind treating your dog like that um, one of the things that we are, as positive trainers, um, we will say is that when we know better, we do better. I didn't know how to do positive training, but I knew that it was there. So I knew about clicker training. Um, I had been recommended several books. Uh, so Don't Shoot the Dog and The Culture Clash were the two books, which uh, I think everybody should start their dog training journey with. And those two books were recommended to me um, for me to read and I didn't read them. Um, it didn't pay into uh, my philosophy on life. Um, I was a, so I was 26 at the time, uh, a young cop out to set my mark on the world and uh, my attitude was if I am telling you to do it, you will do it. Okay, now that was a, a, a viewpoint. Okay, so it was a it was it was how I was viewing the world. Okay, um, I had this uh, role which society had given me, where I had authority, and it's like the kind of Cartman uh, from South Park. Uh, you will respect my authority, ah! right? So you will respect the fact that I have this rank, I have this uniform, and I have this authority, and that that travelled further into. Uh, my own life and my life with my dogs. Further to that, um, I was raised uh, Catholic, so all of the rules, um, <laughs> all the rules that go with that, okay, uh, and I'll, I'm going to keep my mouth shut about that because everybody's on their own path as far as their faith goes, but I'm now an atheist. Uh, so, so that, that, all that stuff combined, um, served to uh, inform how I dealt with my dogs, okay, so I was really heavy-handed with them, okay. I occasionally petted them, clapped them, but basically it was, you'll do as I'm told. Further to that, I read um, some books on this notion of dogs as pack animals and us having to be a pack leader and then bought into Caesar Milan's uh, philosophy wholeheartedly, okay. So that was my background, and then I started on a more progressive path, uh, and very probably within very very quickly after I started on that path, uh, I stopped using physical corrections, uh, and probably within a two two year period, I wasn't using verbal corrections either. So now where I am, and it's not that 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 this is my point of view. I think humans are different because we've got a ability to think cognitively, so we've got ability to see into the future, uh, see into the future, to imagine uh, and rationalise, which we don't know that other animals have got yet. Okay, so this is, uh, and I know that that's perhaps slightly controversial or perhaps even contradictory to what I'm about to say next is that we are doing the best with the information that we have. Okay. So, 
we're doing our best based on our own learning experience or our learning history all right now i, I accept that with animals I, I don't think that with humans i think that it can be a cop-out okay and that's probably a conversation for us to have uh, in the bar at a conference okay rather than on facebook because it's probably a little bit of a deeper um, conversation to have anyway so i started in a more progressive approach uh, and then put the responsibility on me to teach my dogs what I want them to do rather than for my dogs to understand what I was asking them to do just because I was asking them to do it okay so they don't speak English they don't speak human and they're trying to fit their way into an alien world as far as they're concerned all right so that allowed me to uh, treat the dogs that I worked with and my own dogs with a much more compassionate approach Okay, now I'm going to go back very slightly to uh, the um, the previous stuff. I think no, no, I don't think we do. Okay, every being in this planet has a desire to control outcomes. That's what our behaviour is for: is to control outcomes. So the less control we have over outcomes, the more that we will start exhibiting that control in other places. So my life changed markedly um, from the path that I thought I was on and the amount of control that I had over my own destiny um, changed okay, and reduced. And as a result of that, I then exercised more control over my own dogs. okay, And paying back into the philosophy that I had of being, you'll do what I'm, I'm telling you to do because I'm in control and I'm in charge and I've got the authority, then the dog suffered for that and I started, and uh, yeah, and I became harsher with them, okay? So that's, um, when we look at anybody working with their dog, okay? Any person working with their dog, um, the more control that they have over their lives, the less control and I find that they have over the, the um, over the, the less sorry the less they want to be controlling of their dog okay now where I am now with that is having been in a position at many times throughout my life where uh, I didn't have the control that I wanted okay um, through a variety of things whether that's yeah so personal um, financial, philosophical, uh, psychological, uh, all, all these different um, aspects of our lives. Because I didn't have the control that I wanted to have, I remember what that feels like and it is horrendous. It is a truly, truly, truly horrendous position to be in to feel that you're trapped and you can't do very much. It's horrible, absolutely horrible. So because I remember that and where I am now in my life, uh, 46 years old, and having an old hat on, okay, um, is that I don't ever want anybody and any person, any being in my life to experience that at my hand, okay. So my dogs, uh, I do my absolute best to make sure that they have as much control over their outcomes as they possibly can. And in the last video series, which I've just published uh, over the last uh, couple of weeks, is about general levels of reinforcement. So the more that the dog can control access to outcomes, let's check in the wind, it should be okay, all right. So the more that the dog has control over access to those outcomes, and the more uh, access they have to uh, reinforcement, the happier that they'll be, okay? So um, that's where I am now with this stuff, okay? Um, so whether this is of interest to you or helpful or not, um, who knows, okay? So it, cost me, it doesn't cost me a massive amount to, to, to make this content, it just cost me time. Um, to upload it, or to shoot it and upload it, okay? So, uh, I hope that's helpful to you. Um, everybody's got their own journey. Um, I also know full well the fallout that comes from a coercive approach to learning, okay? So whether that's with our learning, with our own 
um, our peers, supervisors, uh, or whether it's with our dogs. I had supervisors within the, the police who were extremely, extremely controlling. Uh, micromanaged everything and they're horrendous to work for absolutely horrendous to work for for me okay some people like it um, but for me it was it was just horrible absolutely horrible and uh, it affected my relationships with them because I don't like being pushed around like that and and it actually causes me a lot of stress to be pushed around like that whereas other people kind of more acquiesce to it and that's that's fine okay because that's just different personality types uh, so uh, yeah it also had um, effects physically on my health being treated like that okay um, I'm gonna try and turn this up see if I can get a little bit better okay um, so I also suffered some physical um, effects of being put under that level of stress a lot of the time okay so um, skin problems uh, your guts are heaving all the time and all these types of things so so stress does cause physical um, effects on the body and uh, and going back to Bosco and Kitty now that there's Mastiffs don't live very long anyway, okay, and they don't live anywhere near as long as they should. Kitty was eight years old when she died, um, and she died of bloat, and Bosco had heart failure, and he died before he was seven years old. Um, I think I shortened their lives, um, and I, I firmly believe that. I firmly believe that I shortened their lives due to the amount of stress that I put on them through harsh training in their early lives. And as I was saying a few minutes ago, it's one of the single biggest regrets in my life that, that I had a hand in that in treating two beings on this planet who were under my care, and that was the result of it. Uh, yeah, so, and that informs what I do moving forward and what I do with Logan, how I interact with Watson, how I interact with you guys, hopefully. Okay, and it's, that's not always easy, um, depending on the, the feedback that I get. Um, and how I interact with my clients and their dogs. All right, so, uh, yes, longer video uh, today, um, but just some thoughts on that. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, I will catch you over the next few weeks. Um, so, going to the States on Wednesday for Clicker Expo next weekend in Seattle. Then I'm heading down to Los Angeles to do a day at Best Friends. Uh, with some of their staff and then I'm going to San Diego Humane Society for a five day course with some of their staff and other people who are coming on the course so uh, excuse me um, yeah hope you've enjoyed this um, and I will catch you on the other side